Hello everyone and welcome to my bold and beautiful 24 channel. I hope everyone is having a wonderful day. Before we begin, please hit the subscribe button and give this video a thumbs up. Deputy Chief Baker asked Steffi about Sheila's death. Ridge, Brooke, Hope, Thomas and Carter were still in shock after learning that Steffi had murdered Sheila. They were happy Steffi's children were staying overnight. Rich noticed that Hope was unusually quiet and Thomas explained that Steffi had no option. Hope was still shocked that Steffi had killed her husband's birth mother. Hope empathized with Steffi's scary position. Ridge, Brooke, Hope, Thomas and Carter talked about how Sheila shot her kid and Thomas mentioned that Finn's feelings for Sheila were still not black and white. Trying to see it from Finn's point of view, Hope stated that he still had to accept that his wife had murdered his mother. Ridge didn't believe Finn's deep attachment to Sheila. He claimed that once Finn was born, Sheila was nowhere to be found. Nevertheless, Lee reared him and was his biological mother. Hope was startled that Ridge did not understand Finn's point of view. Thomas reiterated to Hope that it had been self-defense. He hoped that after some time alone with Steffi, Finn would have digested things and could support her as he was meant to. Ridge was concerned that Finn would be too distraught to assist his wife, and Ridge insisted that Steffi needed her spouse while being questioned by the police. Ridge recognized the cops were on their way back over there, so he decided he needed to go there as well. Carter volunteered to accompany Ridge, but Ridge did not want to appear as if Steffi needed a lawyer just yet. Brick inquired about Hope's well-being after Ridge had left. Hope responded that she was the only one who supported Finn, but he wasn't the only one who had mixed thoughts about Sheila. Hope added that Deacon believed he had fallen in love with Sheila and would be saddened to hear about her death. Well, at least he's free, Brooke reasoned. Hope's jaw gaped, but Brooke refused to apologize for her sentiments about Sheila's death. Carter stated that Deacon had managed to see something positive in Sheila. Maybe Thomas answered, but he added that the good news was that Deacon wouldn't have to stay away from Hope and the kids anymore. Hope left so she could be the one to deliver her father the news. Thomas offered to go but Hope insisted that it remain between her and her father. After Hope took off, Thomas expressed gratitude to Rich for going to support Steffi, who did not need to be speaking with the police at that time. Carter wished Rich had let him go as well but Brooke warned that bringing in a lawyer so quickly could give the impression that Steffi had something to hide. Thomas couldn't image what Steffi had gone through to be forced to protect herself and kill someone while making dinner. At the cliff home, the perplexed Finn looked at his bloodied hands. He claimed Sheila's blood had always been inside him but now it was on his hands. And yours, he informed Steffi. Steffi gulped miserably. Finn added that he was struggling to reconcile the reality that Sheila had done terrible things to Steffi and her family, including shooting them, but she remained the lady he had lost sleep over as a youngster. Back then he questioned if his smile and determination came from his birth mother. Finn became distraught unable to express how much it meant to finally meet Sheila and understand about his biology, especially after discovering who she truly was. And now I'm never going to see her again because you killed her, he told her. Steffi, who appeared to have been stabbed, responded that she realized how difficult it was for him, but Sheila had broken into their home with the same insane expression on her face as she had in the alley. Steffi wondered what else she should have done besides defend herself. He claimed to understand all of this, but it didn't erase the reality that his mother had died in his own home at the hands of his wife. Finn and Steffi overheard police sirens. Finn, startled, remarked that he couldn't do this. Steffi appeared puzzled. He claimed he couldn't do this with the police. He quickly skirted out the patio door. Later, Steffi was alone with Deputy Chief Baker. He couldn't believe that after all these years it had occurred. Steffi said she killed Sheila in self-defense and Baker inquired about the incident. Steffi explained that she had been alone and heard weird thumping. She checked several times, but nothing was there. She figured it was the wind. Baker imagined how unsettling it must have been. Steffi revealed that when she was cooking dinner, the power went out. While hunting for candles, she noticed a shadow on the wall. Steffi noticed Sheila reaching inside her pocket as she approached her. Steffi assumed Sheila had drawn a gun. Baker said that Sheila did not have a gun and was unarmed. Steffi stated that she could have sworn Sheila had a pistol. Sheila had had one previously and had shot Steffi before, so Steffi figured she would do it again. Steffi revealed that Sheila had ignored the instructions to keep away, so she took the knife. That's when Sheila lunged at her and Steffi stabbed her with the knife. Baker inquired whether Steffi was admitting to stabbing Sheila Carter. In self-defense, yes, she said. Baker noted that Steffi claimed Sheila rushed at her, but she had not seen a weapon in Sheila's hand. 
Steffi began to explain, but Ridge appeared and told her not to respond. Steffi said that it was fine because she had only been protecting herself. Baker stated that he was simply attempting to obtain the full story. Ridge assumed it was as simple as a maniac breaking into Steffi's home and attempting to harm her, and Steffi putting her down. That is it. The case is closed, Ridge concluded. Baker, on the other hand, responded that it was not Ridge's place to say. Ridge determined they were finished. For now, Baker agreed. He assured Steffi that he would ask additional questions later, but Ridge responded not without an attorney. Ridge inquired as to Finn's whereabouts once Baker had left. Steffi did not know. She claimed he had left. At I.O. Giardino, Deacon was offering a customer the night special when he noticed Finn striding through the restaurant toward the back entrance. Uh, excuse me, Deacon said to the customer, then walked in the same direction Finn had gone. Finn came across a photograph of Sheila in Deacon's apartment. He even touched one of her black sweatshirts. Deacon entered, asking why Finn was there and if he was all right. Finn whispered, the cops are at my house. Sheila went there, Finn explained. Denying it, Deacon claimed Sheila had vowed not to go there. Finn revealed that Sheila was never coming back. Because the cops had been mentioned, Deacon inquired whether Sheila had been arrested. Deacon noticed Finn acting strangely and asked him to explain what was going on. Finn recounted that Sheila had broken into the house and threatened Steffi, who had stabbed Sheila in self-defense with a knife after Sheila rushed at her. She killed her, Finn told a distraught Deacon. Deacon questioned how this could be possible. Deacon alleged that Steffi murdered Sheila. Finn insisted that it had happened in self-defense. Finn expressed regret for having to tell Deacon, as well as for Sheila's absence. Deacon left the apartment, upset. Finn sat down and looked at the photograph of Sheila. Hope arrived, calling for her father, but Finn said Deacon wasn't there. She questioned why Finn wasn't at home, and Finn explained that he hadn't been able to remain. Hope explained that she had heard about Finn's mother and was there to inform her father. Finn confessed that he had previously informed Deacon, which was why he had left. Finn explained that Deacon had been shaken up, and this was a common occurrence. Hope apologized. Finn admitted that he should not be so upset. He claimed that Sheila had shot him, his wife, and held him prisoner. Sheila had remained Sheila till the final end, bursting into his home and frightening his wife. Finn stated that he should despise Sheila. Looking up at Hope, he wondered why he didn't hate Sheila. Finn wondered whether it was love or regret over a squandered opportunity. He didn't think he loved Sheila and he wondered how he could love her. He recalled Ridge saying Sheila was an animal who had received what she deserved. Ridge wanted Finn to feel the same way he did, but she was my mother, and now I'll never see her again. Finn started crying and Hope hurried over to hold him. Meanwhile in the cliff home, Ridge held Steffi. He claimed she needed her hubby and wondered where Finn was. Thanks for watching if you like this video, so please don't forget to subscribe my channel and don't miss any update.